Hello, my name is Leroy Finkenmore Jr. and I live in Berkeley, California. I'm an author, activist, um, founder of many organizations um, from Crip Hot Needs with the K to back in the day I had a nonprofit called Disability Advocates of Minorities Organization, you know, so helped to start what's called Sins and Dallas. I'm a journalist with Poor Magazine. And yeah, and just an activist and a writer of many books. Um, the latest book is Black Disabled Ancestors. And I'm also a lecturer on college campuses. So the first the, the first example that I realized that there was discrimination was back in the early eighties when me and two other black disabled boys um decided to do a letter campaign and this is before computers who we had to write so we did a letter campaign to a lot of black black um, organizations and black leaders at the time um asking why that there was no black disabled people on tv or anywhere so that's the first time that um, that I, you know, put on my shoulders and um, challenged the system. So um, the the other time when I realized that there was a lack of accessibility is when is when. Um, I was attending my father's activist meetings in the early 80s, and they were talking about police brutality and other stuff that happens to black community. And when I left that meeting, I was approached by uh, a disabled group that wanted me to join the group to talk about, um, to advocate about curb cuts. And I asked them, I was like, well, you know, I just left a meeting with my father and they were talking about police brutality. And a lot of black disabled people can't enjoy the curb cuts because they can't go outside because they're getting shot by the police. And the, the group said, well, we can't, we can't deal with that. We're dealing with curb cuts. So that's, that's when I really found out, I was like, wow, this is two different worlds and two different um, issues. You know, when, when the ADA was signed and that picture was everywhere, once again, I, I looked at the picture, I was like, huh, you know, it looks like me. And um, back back in the late nineties, um, I had an organization called Display Advocates of Minorities Organization, and we had tons of um, copies of the cover of the ABA, and we put on the top of the ABA who is what what is missing from this picture. And of course, you know, we, we, we all knew the answer is people of color. So, um, you know, that, that was the first statement that, um, that I made about the ADA, you know, was like, where is people of color in the picture of the ADA? So, yeah, of course, the ADA has made a difference in society and, you know, the global society. You know, we can see it with, um, you know, accessibility in public places, um, 
you see it in um, communication, you know, um, you know, especially during these, um, you know, social network um, life that we're living in with Google and Twitter, you know, all of them are making their products more accessible, so that's good. You know, we, we, we see it, you know, a little bit in the airlines, not a lot. But, you know, yeah, so we see it, you know. And the the place that needs more growth is, um, of course, um, people of color, you know, people that are poor, you know, people that are quote unquote immigrants. Um, I think still the ADA um, do not reach them. Um, that's that's why um, my organization in the nineties and early two thousands had the other side rally, the other side of the ADA, to get the voices of um, communities that haven't felt the the good of the ADA. So yeah, so it needs it needs a, a lot of work, especially when it comes to our cities, our our, our um, inner cities. You know, I live in Berkeley. In Berkeley, you can you know Berkeley is like a, a utopia place for people with disabilities. You know, you see curb cuts. You see, you know, we got the Ed Roberts building. But if you go to East Oakland. You know, there's, you know, there's a curb. There's only only a handful of curb cuts. You know, the, the roads are still bumpy. Um, you know, storage is still small. So you know, you, you can see the difference between communities, and yeah, so that that needs to change. Um, of course. The high uh, unemployment rate of uh, people with disabilities haven't changed since the 80s. And I'm talking about um, black and brown disabled people because um, it's still a high 90% unemployment rate. So that still hasn't changed. And yeah, I can go on and on, but yeah, there's, there needs to be more. Um, push of the ADA in certain communities. And, and, and also, I think our, our, our leadership in Washington needs to change. Not only the president, but our disabled lobbyists needs to change. We need more young people with disabilities taking over the, the leadership that who won't compromise. Because that's, I think that's one of the biggest things that we lose is that when we compromise, we look back and it's like, oh my God, you didn't get nothing for that compromise. So I think we need um, more leadership that, that don't um, compromise. I think people with disabilities in key roles I think we need a disabled president, <laughs> you know, in key roles. Um, we need disabled people in the media. We need disabled people in the DOJ, the, um, the Department of Justice. We have the DOJ enforces the law. So we need strong people that will enforce the laws. Um, we need more disabled people in all kinds of areas, education, um, mental health, um, you know, legislators, you know, people that can, people that, that are passing budgets, you know, yeah. Well, right, right now it's it's hard because of this COVID nineteen. You know, right now it's, people need to be safe. 
you know, that's, that's the basic thing. Um, COVID-19, you know, people need to really think of what they're doing, you know, really think, you know, if it's necessary to go outside, if it's necessary to protest, you know, yeah, we, we definitely need to think what's really necessary and, what, and what's not necessary, you know. So I think at this time, we can't think of anything else because it's life out like there. You know, the media is talking about the elections, talking about, you know, other things, but if we, if we don't live, then we can't enjoy anything on this earth. So I think um, people really need to take serious on this COVID, it's, it's not over. And that, that, that includes about all the services and the laws and the, and the lifestyles of people with disabilities. So yeah, so that's 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 on my on my plate. The only thing that's on my plate right now is you know trying to stay safe and trying to stay in contact with people with disabilities. There needs to be more mentorship for young young disabled people coming up. And mentorship in, in the in the in the public um, domain, not only in the disability community, but it needs to be wide open so people know about it in, in other communities. That and I also I also think that um, going back to black and brown. Is it please? There needs, there needs to be a national campaign, national awareness campaign for the black and brown community around disability. Because we, we did not get it, you know, through the ADA, we did not get it through 504. And because of that, our communities are slowly becoming. Um, um, not 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 important for black and brown disabled people because we we had to leave our community to get services. We had to leave our community just to be recognized as disabled people. So I so I think there needs to be a national campaign in the black and brown community so we can. Um, so disabled people can be turned home and really educate our black and brown communities in what, in what I call black ableism is one thing that that is um, that is a roadblock for a lot of black and brown disabled activists that want to come back home and work in our communities. So we need a national campaign so um we can get rid of the um black ableism. <laughs>